Hello again and welcome to the second part of this MOOC dedicated to oil refining. This second part focuses on the primary separation of the crude oil and gasoline production. Do you remember this experiment we made together when we heated up some crude oil? Well, the first stage of oil refining consists in reproducing this experiment, but this time at industrial scale. The first stage consists in heated up crude oil up to a temperature of 380 degrees and at atmospheric pressure. At this temperature, the crude oil is partially vaporized. This vapor and liquid mixture then enters a column which we call the topping. At the top of the column, we will cover the light molecules, I mean C1 and C2, or methane and ethane. It is what we call the fuel gas. Then, we recover molecules between three and four carbons, propane and butane. This mixture is called LPG for liquefied petroleum gas. We use this C3 and C4 mixture for domestic applications, for example, gas bottles, but also for LPG run vehicles. Then, we recover the naphtha, kero, and finally, diesel fuel. Once we have produced these cuts, at the tower bottoms, we have what we call the ATR. ATR stands for Atmospheric Residue, because these molecules remain liquid at 380 degrees and atmospheric pressure. These three cuts are called straight run, meaning that they are actually produced directly from crude oil itself. We make this distinction because we will see later on that there are a naphtha, a kero, and a diesel fuel which are not straight run. So, what are we going to do with this naphtha kit? Remember, the naphtha contains molecules with a number of carbon atoms ranging from 4 to 10. These molecules always can be classified as N paraffins isoparaffins, but also naphthenes and aromatics. These molecules are rooted to a petrochemical plant to produce intermediates necessary to manufacture plastics. This naphtha is called petrochemical naphtha because it is rooted to a petrochemical plant which is called steam cracker. Generally speaking, a refinery is located close to a steam cracker, and there are some synergies of raw materials and energy between both plants. However, the refinery might not be located close to a steam cracker. But then, in that case, what can we do with these molecules between 4 and 10 atoms of carbon? We are going to produce gasoline. I propose you now to see the way how to elaborate gasoline from naphtha. But by the way, what are the main properties for a gasoline fuel? Actually, there are two main properties to be respected to satisfy the European regulations. The first one of these main properties is called the RON. RON stands for the Research Octane Number. This property is linked to the combustion of the gasoline in the engine. The regulation imposes the run to be above 95 or 98 in Europe. It is this figure which you can find in gas stations. The octane rating characterizes the resistance to the knock phenomenon in a gasoline engine. But what is knock phenomenon? Before speaking about the knock phenomenon, as a reminder, Gasoline engine is actually the place where the mixture air plus gasoline burns thanks to a spark or a source of ignition. Imagine that a mixture air plus gasoline enters the engine. With a source of ignition, the mixture burns and produces some energy. But it turns out that certain molecules may burn by themselves before the source of ignition takes place. Thus, in the engine, there are two sets of combustion. The first one is due to the fact that some molecules auto-ignite 
and the circled one in the presence of the source of ignition. These two phenomena, not occurring at the same time, causes the phenomenon of knock, which is characterized by a very specific noise. This knock weakens the engine and can even break it. To avoid this phenomenon, engine manufacturers ask the octane rating of the gasoline to be higher than a certain value, typically 95 or 98. But which molecules have a high octane rating and which ones have a low one? The scientists observed that the n octane the C7 linear paraffin, presents a high tendency to auto-ignition phenomenon. So, the scientists conferred him the value of zero. On the other hand, the 2,2,4-trimethylpentane, also called isooctane, presents a very high resistance to auto-ignition. So, the scientists conferred him the value of 100. With these two extreme values, we can define a scale. This scale makes it possible to characterize the auto-ignition tendency of any molecules or mixture of molecules. Indeed, a molecule which has a run of 50 would have the same behavior regarding combustion as a mixture of 50% of n octane and 50% of iso-octane. Now that you are familiar with run issues, here is a second man proudly asked to the refiner. We impose the sulfur content in gasoline fuel to be lower than 10 ppm. This constraint is essential due to environmental issues to avoid the massive rejections of sulfur from vehicles. I remind you that the naphtha contains the molecules of the crude oil ranging from 4 to 10 atoms of carbon. The sulfur can be present under various forms, which we call mercaptans, disulfides, or thiophanes. If we make a zoom on the straight run naphtha produced from various crude oils, you can see that the run ranges from 50 to 60. But the final objective is either 95 or 98. If we do the same exercise with the sulfur content, you can see that it can be very low, several ppm but can reach 1000 ppm for a maximum value of 10, which is asked by the regulation. It thus belongs now to the refiner to work to respect these values. But then, how to do that? First, let's focus on the sulfur. The refiner removes the sulfur with the help of hydrogen in a unit called hydro treatment. In fact, the refiner uses the strong affinity between hydrogen and sulfur to let them react together. This chemical reaction is made in the presence of a catalyst. At high temperature, about 300 degrees, and under moderate pressure, between 20 and 30 bars. The typical catalyst is alumina on which are deposited some metals, like cobalt or molybdenum. Now that the sulfur is removed, how to reach run objectives? As far as octane is concerned, let's return to the mapping of the molecules present in the naphtha. Remember, we always have paraffins, naphtins, and aromatics. As we said before, the molecules which have the highest run are isoparaffins. But in reality, the aromatics present an even higher run rating and can go beyond 100. I remind you that the simplest aromatic has 6 atoms of carbon and is called the benzene. It is impossible to have an aromatic molecule with less than 6 atoms of carbon. The refiner thus divides an aftercut into two sets of molecules. The first set of molecules with less than 6 atoms of carbon Enable to produce aromatics will be called the light naphtha. And the set of molecules which have more than six atoms of carbon will be called the heavy naphtha. Then, the refiner will let paraffins and naphtins react to transform them into aromatics. 
You can see that for naphthenes, it will be much more easier to form aromatics because the cyclic structure is already part of the molecules, unlike paraffins. Let's begin with the separation of the light naphtha from the heavy naphtha. The refiner realizes this separation in a distillation tower called the naphtha splitter. The typical distribution between light naphtha and heavy naphtha is one-third, two-thirds. I mean, one-third is light naphtha and two-thirds for the heavy naphtha. In this example, the full-range naphtha has a run of 54, the light naphtha has a run of 69 and 47 for the heavy naphtha. The reactions consisting in transforming the naphthenes and paraffins into aromatic take place in a unit called reforming. These reactions are very difficult and take place at very high temperature, up to 500 degrees, and at moderate pressure, about 20 bars. The heavy naphtha molecules react with the help of a platinum-based catalyst. In this example, the feed run is 47 and the product run can reach up to 103. During these reactions, we produce some hydrogen because naphthenes dehydrogenate into aromatics. What comes out of the reforming is called the reformant and can be routed to the gasoline pool. But then, what about light naphtha? If we do a quick calculation, we see that a mixture of 30% of RON69 and 70% of RON103 lead to a RON of 93, which is lower than either 95 and 98. So, we cannot mix this light naphtha with reformate, otherwise we would not satisfy any more the run of 95 and 98. So, what can we do? Let's return to molecules distribution in the naphtha. This time, no miracle is to be expected, because it's the isoparaffins which present the highest run rate. The refiner needs to transform N paraffins into isoparaffins. These reactions are called isomerization and they also take place on a catalyst. Isomerization can boost ROM by about 20 points. In this example, the light naphtharone is 69 and the molecules coming out of the isomerization unit can have a ROM up to 88 and it's called the isomerate. And this time, if we mix the isomerate with the reformate, we can have a value of 99, which is higher than either 95 and 98. And this time, the refiner has reached RON and sulfur objectives. We are now at the end of this second video of the MOOC dedicated to oil refining. Do not forget to test your knowledges on refiningisexciting.com website. See you very soon on the third video of this MOOC. Bye bye and thank you for your attention.